As a reminder, all MBTA activities are, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit www.mbta.com slash Title VI to reach the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. We ask that you hold, please hold all questions and comments until the end of the presentation. Uh, and before we get started, I'd like to go over a few meeting controls for folks who are not familiar with Zoom. We are offering Spanish and Haitian Creole interpretation this evening. You will notice a globe icon at the bottom of your screen. Please select English in the drop down menu if you wish to remain in the English room, and the same applies to the other languages. You'll be able to see the presentation, but only hear the audio in the language that you selected. We also have an ASL interpreter. If you would like to view the ASL, inter ASL interpreter at all times, keep your view settings in gallery mode. It should be the default setting. You can change this view by clicking the button that says gallery mode in the top right of your screen. Gallery mode shows all the presenters on the screen together, and this ensures that you can see the interpreter as well as the speaker. If a presenter is sharing slides, the view will change and your screen will primarily display the slides with the presenters and the interpreter's video moving to be smaller in the top right corner. Often the default setting will show only the speaker, not the ASL interpreter. To change this, you can pin the interpreter's video and you just click the ellipses in the top right corner of the interpreter's video and select pin video. Next slide. If you have any technical questions, please feel free to use the chat function. We will attempt to troubleshoot your problem and assist you. We also have closed captionings for this meeting. To see the captions, please press the closed caption button to get them started. And I now turn it over to project manager, AJ Tanner. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, and thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is AJ Tanner. I'm a senior project manager with the MBTA's Office of the Chief Engineer and the project manager for the Mattapan Transformation Program. I'm very excited to provide this update on the program and look forward to answering any questions you might have. On the screen now is the agenda for tonight's presentation. After introductions, we'll begin by giving an update on the trolley refurbishment program, which we know is a very critical aspect of this um, for the Mattapan line community. I will also be giving an update on ridership data, along with a progress update for the Mattapan line transformation timeline and design. This includes a presentation of the inline station concept designs, which were developed using public feedback and feedback from MBTA stakeholders, including operations, system-wide accessibility, engineering and maintenance, et cetera. We also have preliminary cost estimates for the inline stations that we're gonna be sharing with you all today. An update on Mattapan and Ashmont stations will also be provided. Being the two most complex and operations critical stations on the line, the concept designs for these stations are still in the works, but we will talk a little bit about some of the design challenges, trade-offs, and considerations that we are balancing at each location. We will also talk about the ridership survey results that came about from our last public meeting and talk about future public involvement initiatives. To be transparent, this update today is generally more robust for the inline stations in Milton and Dorchester. However, I wanna make it clear that engagement with all of the communities, specifically Mattapan, are integral to the success of this project. That being said, our next public meeting will be in person in Mattapan. This meeting will occur when the conceptual design for the Mattapan station is more defined or expecting that to happen sometime later this year. And lastly, at the end, we will do a Q&A. And before we get into the presentation, I just want to quickly introduce Joe Pavo, uh, Chief Engineer for the MBTA. Joe, if you're out there, you gotta unmute. All right, sounds like Joe oh, might- I think I unmuted finally. There you are. Hi. We can hear you now. Thanks. Good evening, everybody. Uh, as AJ mentioned, I'm the Acting Chief Engineer for the MBTA. Um, just real quick, just the, the role of, of, of my office and what AJ is managing is the, the pre-engineering for the project. Um, our role is to fully define this project. Um, I can't stress the importance uh, that all of you provide 
comments tonight, ask questions, get involved. This is an opportunity to ensure that all of you have an opportunity to voice your concerns and provide input tonight. Once the project is fully defined, uh, my office will be handing this off to the capital transformation team, which is gonna be led by Eric Berkman. Um, he will be taking the design all the way through final design and into construction and delivering the final product for all of you on behalf of the MBTA and the capital transformation team. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it back to AJ, um, who's gonna go through a presentation. I encourage everybody to ask questions and provide input tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Joe, I appreciate that. Um, before we get into the rest of the presentation, I just wanna take a quick moment uh, to summarize the program for those who have not attended previous public meetings or for those who may not be uh, too familiar with the program. Um, I understand there are lots of projects and construction activities in the Mattapan, Milton, and Dorchester areas. Um, so I just want to clearly dif differentiate this one from the others. So the Mattapan Line Transformation Program is the complete overhaul of infrastructure on the Mattapan Line, which runs from Mattapan Station to Ashmont Station. The primary element of the program is that the vehicles on the Mattapan Line will change from the existing PCC trolleys to Type 9 light rail vehicles. This means that all the infrastructure on the Mattapan line, including bridges, platforms, power distribution, tracks, vehicle maintenance facilities, et cetera, all need to be upgraded to accommodate for the new vehicles. The program is currently in the zero to 15% design phase, which is set for completion at the end of 2023. However, this is a massive program. It will take years to design and construct. Once the 15% design package is completed, we will have a schedule prepared for the design and construction of the entire program. To that end, we'll continue to engage with the public throughout the entirety of the program to garner feedback and discuss impacts. So now before we get into the Mattapan Line Transformation Program, I'd like to quickly introduce Andrew McFarlane, who's gonna give a brief update on the Blue Hill Ave Mattapan Square redesign project. Thanks so much, AJ. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew McFarland. I'm a project manager for the MBTA's Transit Priority Group. Uh, we're the office at the MBTA that works with cities and towns to install bus lanes and other bus priority infrastructure. I'm working with the city of Boston on the redesign of Blue Hill Ave, which is an ongoing project to improve traffic safety, um, improve bus service and bus reliability, and also improve um, the public realm from Mattapan Square to Warren Street and Grove Hall. Uh, tonight, there's another public meeting to give folks an update on the Mattapan Square portion of Blue Hill Ave project. Um, but since there's so much um, overlap and interconnectedness between Blue Hill Ave, Mattapan Square, and the Mattapan Line Transformation Project, we wanted to promote some of the um, opportunities that you can get involved in the Blue Hill Ave project. Uh, we've been doing a lot of community engagement over the last couple of years. We're planning a lot more uh, coming up this summer. Uh, tomorrow evening, there's an open house talk about um, some of the design options um, for the Dorchester portion of the Blue Hill Ave. We'll be at uh, Sportsman's Tennis Center by Haramdi Park um, tomorrow evening. Uh, we're also planning similar open houses in Grove Hall and Mattapan later this summer. Uh, those will be TBD, um, those will be announced later this summer. We'll also have a couple of different uh, virtual meetings at the dates included here, and there'll be um, members of the project team at events like the Mattapan Stroll this Sunday in Mattapan Square. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, you can see all these events posted on the project webpage on uh, the city's website included here. Um, if you have comments or questions about Blue Hill Ave, uh, you can reach out to the team through the project hotline, which is this number included here. And um, you can also write us an email to this email account um, and we'll follow up with a response. Um, so thanks so much for everyone's time. And with that, I'll turn it back over to AJ. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate that critical update. Um, so before getting into the Mattapan line transformation program, I just want to give a quick update on the trolley refurbishment project. Um, so just to give a little bit of context, the intent of the trolley refurbishment program is to improve passenger experience and reliability for the Mattapan line right now while the design process of the transformation program occurs. So these two programs are happening in parallel. Uh, as of today, two refurbished trolleys are back on the Mattapan line. The third trolley is expected to return to service this fall. 
Um, so at peak service, there are four trolleys operating on the line at any given time. Um, so we're really looking forward to having that fourth trolley uh, return to service sometime next year so that all four active trolleys will be refurbished. And these will become the primary vehicles for the line. You can keep going. Thank you. Um, so as a result of this program, the MBTA elected to conduct updated ridership counts for the Mattapan line. On the screen shows the average daily ridership as of fall 2018, which is of course pre-COVID, and spring 2023, which is essentially today. And the percentage of ridership maintained at each location between then and now. Being that the trolleys, the TAP system on the trolleys is not enforced, um, these counts have to be taken manually by MBTA staff who visited each station over the span of several weeks in March and April 23, and similarly October and November of fall 2018. Um, as anticipated, the stations with the greatest ridership are Mattapan and Ashmont, with a total of about 75% of the line's ridership using these stations. The highest ridership stations at in, on the inline stations are Milton and Central Ave. Transit criticality can also be gathered from the percentage change of ridership at each location from before and after the COVID-19 pandemic. The Mattapan line as a whole has maintained 58% of its pre-COVID ridership. All stations outside of Valley Road and Capon Street maintained at least 50% of their ridership. Valley and Capon stations maintained only 16 and 22% of their ridership percentages, respectively. Um, and I do just want to ask quickly, I see a couple things coming in in the chat that the slides are not being updated. I just want to make sure um, that the slides are changing for everybody before I keep going. AJ, I believe the slides are advancing. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, okay, you can keep going. Now onto the Mattapan line transmission program. Uh, at this time, we are moving from the concept design stage to the 15% design for the inline stations and in the concept design stage for Mattapan and Ashmont stations. We're expecting to complete the 15% design package for the entirety of the program by the end of 2023. This package will include finalized layouts and concepts for each station, as well as a project schedule and cost estimate for the entirety of the program. As I mentioned, we are planning on hosting a third public meeting in Mattapan sometime in the fall of 2023, and we are expecting to return the third refurbished trolley to service around that same time. The current funding available for Mattapan line transformation is $114.5 million with an additional $12.2 million for trolley refurbishments. This funding is expected to fund the entirety of the program design as well as some of the early action packages. However, it is anticipated that this program in its entirety will exceed this value and will require additional funding. At the conclusion of 15% design, we'll have an estimate of how much additional funding may be required. We do have construction cost estimates for the inline station concepts, which we'll get into later in the presentation. As I mentioned before, this is a very large program and will take years to design and construct. And the intent of these meetings is to engage the public early in the process so that feedback can be incorporated and the public can anticipate both the short and long-term improvements. Now that we're now we're going to get into the planning and design update for the program. The majority of the program is progressing from the concept stage to the 15% design stage. This includes electrical systems, tracks, bridges, substructures, drainage, power, inline station platform, signals, and communications. Today, we are going to share with you conceptual designs and renderings for the inline stations, along with preliminary cost estimates for each. The team is still working diligently on the Ashmont and Mattapan station designs. There are many complexities, trade-offs, and challenges with the design for both Mattapan and Ashmont. These are also the most critical stations to the line in many different ways. For these reasons, we are taking the time to make sure that we get the design at these locations right. That being said, I'd like to introduce and pass things over to Phil Santos. Phil is the project manager for HNTB, the primary design consultant for the project, and he's going to walk us through the program update for each station. Take it away, Phil. Thank you, AJ. And thank you everybody for attending this meeting. We've been making 
Great progress on the entire program, and we're excited to share with you today some visual representations of what the inline stations, that is the stations between Mattapan and Ashmont, may look like. The design of these stations was developed using your feedback while focusing on the key priorities of safety, accessibility, reliability, and passenger experience. At Central Ave Station, to improve operations and safety, we are relocating the inbound platform to the east of Central Ave, adjacent to Central Cleaners Building, raising the crossing and converting this intersection to a four-way stop. Currently, trains must stop at the platform before stopping again at the street and must wait for a break in car traffic before proceeding. Relocating the platform to the other side removes ambiguity of trying to determine if the train is stopped at the intersection or the station, and adding a four-way stop reduces the amount of time the train is delayed due to vehicular traffic. The outbound platform heading to Mattapan will remain in the same location as it is today to create a similar scenario of this crossing for the outbound direction. This is a rendering of Milton Station. We're looking at the inbound platform, the platform adjacent to the existing MBTA station parking lot. We looked at converting this platform to a center island platform, but due to the curvature and restrictions in space through this station, we kept the platforms in the same configuration that it is today. Each side of the platform includes a slope to take you to the full 14 inch height requirement for full level boarding of the type nine vehicle. The new platforms will include passenger seating areas, windscreens, an emergency call box and full overhead canopies to protect passengers from the elements. You'll notice a new elevator is proposed in the location of the old stairs. This, in conjunction with a slope walkway the MBTA is evaluating, will provide the station with two new accessible connections from Adams Street. This is another look at the Milton inbound platform, but instead of looking back towards Mattapan, we're looking forward towards Ashmont, just to give you a, a visualization of, of the entire area. This is a video. So this Central Ave and Milton station will remain as side platform stations. All other stations along the corridor, including Mattapan and Ashmont, will be center island platform stations. Our team is hard at work putting together the design of the island platforms at the other stations. This video is a generic representation of what an island platform will look like along this corridor. It will include similar amenities as the side platform stations, Things like benches, windscreens, and overhead canopy, cameras, emergency call boxes will all be included and will help improve the rider's experience on this line. LED lights will illuminate each station area to and from public access points, providing additional safety and comfort while also avoiding light spill and glare to neighboring properties. And we'll post this video on, on the website, I think, as well, so you guys can take another look at it. Preferred alternatives at the inline stations have been identified, and after some fine-tuning of each of the stations, we developed rough order of magnitude cost estimates for each location. The values on screen here do not include the cost to design or the future cost of, to maintain the new stations. Updated estimates will be included with the 15% design submission, and that'll occur by the end of this year. These are preliminary numbers meant to help guide the overall program and get a better understanding of the type of funding we will need. At Ashmont, we've been doing a lot of work evaluating the current loop structure and what we can and can't do to the structure as we look to bring in the new type nines to the, nine, to the line. Our analysis shows that the existing structure can't support the new type nines and would not be able to support a longer ADA accessible station platform and must be removed. The new type nines are bi-directional, meaning in the future, the loop will not be required. In collaboration with the MBTA, our design team is currently developing two options for a new Ashmont station. Option one would be to remove the structure and rebuild it to allow for the same passenger connections that exist today. The Mattapan line station would remain elevated. Option two, would remove the structure and put the Mattapan line at ground level with the red line, with the existing red line trains. The accurate option allows for a shorter connection to the inbound red line platform, but
but it does make things slightly longer as you come outbound heading home. At Mattapan, there isn't an elevated structure to evaluate, but the location has its own unique challenges. The site includes a train station, a bus station, the MBTA police building, and is the storage and maintenance facility location of the Mattapan line. We are anticipating significant amount of work to occur at this site, which is why the concepts here are taking a little bit longer to develop. We're working on several alternatives and are currently awaiting the results of a traffic analysis at Mattapan Square. The analysis will provide guidance on Mattapan site access and Mattapan Square layout. We will, we will share our findings with the City of Boston for input into the design for the Mattapan Square and transit improvements on Blue Hill Avenue. Within the station and yard limits, we'll need space for a new maintenance facility, an area to store vehicles, the new Type 9 vehicles, and we'll need to improve and we'll need to make improvements to the station platform area. We're anticipating a center island platform at Mattapan, similar to the one you saw in the video rendering. We will go into further detail on Ashmont and Mattapan stations at a future public meeting. That's the update that I have on the current design program. I'll be more than happy to answer any of the questions you have on this topic at the end of the presentation. I'll pass it back to AJ to discuss some of the early action items we've completed to date. Thank you, Phil, for that update. Um, in addition to the design of this overall program, we've been working to identify improvements that we can make in the short term to improve rider experience. Through our public engagement activities, we've continued to hear about the difficulties transitioning from the red line to the Mattapan line. To make a small but hopefully impactful change, we reconfigured the countdown sign on the Ashmont red line outbound platform to display the departure times for the Mattapan line. That way, when riders get off the red line, they can immediately see how much time they have to catch the next trolley. Another issue that we heard about at our last public meeting was inadequate lighting. Following that meeting, the team reviewed light levels at all stations on the Mattapan line. The MBTA is currently in the process of procuring LED lights to replace all of the existing light bulbs on the Mattapan line. This will result in a more cohesive, brighter, and more energy efficient lighting system across all stations at the Mattapan line. As we continue to address this concern, we plan to work with municipalities to improve lighting on non-MBTA owned property surrounding the Mattapan line. At Milton Station, we're currently working on a few improvements as well. First, we're in the planning and design stage for an accessible sloped walkway from Adams Street to Milton Station. The exact location is still being determined, but we're expecting this to be the first construction activity that happens as part of the project. We are also in the process of paving Milton Station parking lot to improve rider experience and improve accessibility. We are expecting this to occur this construction season, so before the winter hits. Similarly, at Mattapan Station, we're planning to pave the busway and maintenance yard. This will improve passenger experience and provide drainage improvements for the yard. We also expect this to happen prior to this winter. The last early action I am to discuss is an expedited bridge rehabilitation program. It is expected that this package will be expedited ahead of all other major construction, and this will lay the foundation for the rest of the project. And also, we hope that this displays MBTA's commitment to making this project happen. At our last meeting, it was requested that the MBTA provide, provide a survey for riders to complete rather than having to call or send an email. Um, since then, we've we created a survey and we've had just under 400 people complete it, both online and in person at events or while riding the trolley themselves. If I bothered you during your, uh, your ride into work one morning, I apologize, but thank you for filling out our survey. Uh, similar to our ridership data, we found that Ashmont and Mattapan are the two, the two highest ridership stations, while Milton and Central are the highest ridership inline stations. Additionally, we wanted to see how people are actually using the Mattapan line to ensure that we're designing appropriately. About 85% of the survey participants said that they use the Mattapan line to transfer to the red line. This has become a central theme in our Ashmont station design. Next slide, please. About 90% of survey participants also stated that they walk to the Mattapan line. This has told us that we need to focus on station access points, nearby pathways, accessibility, etc. 
And lastly, when the trolleys are out of service, most people take MBTA shuttles, the bus, or their own personal vehicle to their destination. We continue to encourage folks to complete this survey, which will be on the next slide. We also continue to analyze this information so that we can identify, and trend, identify trends to improve station design. The more information we gather, the better, so I encourage everyone to fill out the survey. I'd like to end by re-emphasizing that the MBTA is wholeheartedly committed to public outreach and engagement. We have committed to holding two public meetings every year, and we're prioritizing equity, transparency, and inclusion. On the screen, you'll see some of the community groups that we have met with, and we'll be more than happy to meet with others. We'll continue to reach out to different groups in hopes to, to have some more one-on-one -on -one meetings. We've also ridden the trolleys and distributed our survey. We've been coordinating with the city of Boston to make sure that the Mattapan Square redesign project, which is integral, integrally related to the Mattapan Station and Yard reconfiguration, are coordinated. At the bottom of the screen, you will see our project website and email address. I encourage anyone who is interesting, learn, interested in learning more about the project to reach out. Um, and I also think I may have misstated that the survey link was on this slide, but the survey link is on our website. So if you go to Mattapan, uh, I'm sorry, mbta.com slash MLT, you will see the link to uh, the survey. Um, and with that, I think we're going to shortly going to get into our Q&A, but I want to first pass it off to, um, to Patrick to talk about how to raise your hand. Sure. So I'll actually first just turn it over to Adam to recognize any uh, elected officials in attendance who would like to offer remarks. So, Adam. Hey, good evening, folks. I uh, just want to take a moment and recognize State Senator Walter Timothy, uh, Representative Bill Driscoll, Representative Russell Holmes, and Representative Brandy Fluker Oakley joining us this evening. Um, folks, if you would like to make any comments or have any questions, please use the raise hand feature now, and I'll be happy to call on you. I see Representative Holmes has raised his hand. If we can unmute Representative Holmes. I just wanted to say thanks for incorporating the comments and just wanted to see if you could answer all of the questions in the chat before we started to uh, have take more comments. Those seem to be uh, right to the slide, but that seems to be very helpful to address that. Thanks. So the, no, so, so the, no. Next up, we have uh, Senator Timothy. Senator Timothy, go ahead. I think we might have lost him. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now, Adam? Yes. Go ahead, Senator. Okay. Adam, thank you very much. Because as I was saying, phase one, as we all know, is about four to five years behind schedule, approximately. Phase two, uh, the MBTA refuses to engage in phase two until we finish phase one which of course, as we all know, phase two is the restoration of the stations along the Milton, Mattapan, Dorchester trolley line, which are in desperate need of restoration and refurbishment. Uh, the most acute, I believe, is the Milton station. Now, I'm just asking for concrete dates as to when we're actually gonna commence phase two. That's one question. Uh, in the case of Milton station, the stairs have been boarded up for eight to nine years. And despite protestations from myself and others, including our select board, uh, in March, the steps were demolished. So now we have a, a cliff and uh, we have no temporary accommodations right now. So for instance, if you're trying to access Milton Station from Adam Street, 
you walk around a very large brick building that at night is not well lit from behind. I've seen on dry days, members of my staff, when we were looking over the site, stumble on the walkway. And of course, if you're coming from the other side of Adams Street on foot, you walk through a parking lot of a storage facility, which is a private facility. So my question is this, do we have a concrete date as to when we're gonna restore the staircase for Milton Station? I'm guessing we don't, because I think we would have heard about it. And that un unto itself is unacceptable. What are the plans for the winter time as well to make it safe for people to walk around that very large brick building on Adam Street to access Milton Station? Now, we need more than what we've had, that's for sure, because it's not safe. It's absolutely not safe. So in the short term, what do we have for temporary plans? Because what is there right now is not acceptable. And in the long term, do we have a date? And uh, thank you very much. I look forward to uh, hearing some answers. Thank you, Senator. Thanks, Senator. I can answer um, a couple of those questions. So the the stairs at Milton Station are not intended at this time to be replaced. So as Phil showed in the concept design for Milton Station, we're planning to install an elevator in the location of the demolished stairs. So that will be the end condition. Um, and we are also working on, as I mentioned, we're in the early planning and design phase of installing a sloped walkway from Adams Street as well. So at this point, the two accessible paths of travel to the station are planned to be the sloped walkway, which is an early action item for the project and an elevator that will be from Adams Street. Um, to answer your other question, what is our plan for the winter time to increase safety? Um, one of the things we're doing to improve Milton in the short term is we're, we're paving the entire driveway and parking lot. Um, so I think that is something that, you know, simply improves rider experience. I know that parking lot is not in great condition. So I think paving and restriping it um, will be a, a good improvement. And lastly, you asked about the timeline for the rest of the program. So our intent is to release a schedule for the entirety of the program at 15% once the project is, is fully defined. At this point, we're still working out you know, exactly what is included in the scope of this project and what are we actually doing? We still haven't decided you know, what is Ashmont gonna look like? What is, you know, what is Mattapan gonna look like? And there's still, still design work that needs to be done before we can come up with a complete schedule for the project. Um, but we are planning on releasing that at the end of this year when the 15% design is completed. AJ, thank you very much. Um, I've seen the same briefings that we saw tonight in last week, of course, with Rep Driscoll and Rep Fluke and Rep Holmes. Again, what is the concrete, concrete dates, though, for a replacement of the staircase that's demolished? Because I am aware of the elevator, but do we have any concrete dates? At this time, we don't have dates for the sloped walkway, which would, would happen ahead of the elevator. Okay, now that's, you know, that's not acceptable, Adam, AJ. That's not. Um, I understand there are forces in play bigger than the emissaries from the MBTA who are on the air with us tonight, but that's just not acceptable. But I do thank you for your answer. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Uh, take a moment to recognize Representative Driscoll. Uh, thanks, Adam, and uh, thanks, AJ. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes, sir. Great. Have a little technical difficulty tonight. Um, just to follow up on that, uh, I appreciate the looking at the design renderings, the concepts that you're considering, um, and on the to to follow up on Senator Timothy's question or on timing, could you just walk through again the, you know, we're at basically the fifteen percent design or close to it. Is that is that correct? And then what's the next kind of milestone that we're after once that transition um, of teams occurs that you described earlier? 
Yeah, so at the 15% design level, essentially the whole program scope will be defined. So we'll know exactly what the plan is for each station, each section of track, you know, how power will be distributed, what we're doing for bridges, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think at that point, we will have, you know, 15% cost estimate schedule, et cetera, things of that nature. So I think at that point, we'll have a full schedule. I don't think I know. We will have a schedule for the entirety um, of the program that I think it will be easier um, to kind of keep us accountable to, you know, at this point in the project, we, we still haven't given a full schedule. So I think at that point, um, it will be easier to say, you know, you had committed to beginning construction on this date and it hasn't happened. What's going on. Um, so I, I don't know if that answers your question. Um, but that's, that's kind of the plan moving forward. And I will say the 15% design is scheduled to be completed at the end of, of this year. Yeah. Thank you. It partially answered it. I think, you know, just thinking in terms of like a mass dot project, if we were at a mass dot public meeting, they typically held, you know, hold public meetings at 25% and 75%. So I didn't know if there was another standard milestone for the T or not, or if we're just going to plan to have, you know, these meetings, you know, two to four times a year, or if that's been figured yeah, out. Yeah, I think our plan is to continue having two, two meetings like this a year, in addition to all the other public engagement, you know, the, the other community events that we attend. Um, I don't, I don't think these public meetings will directly go and, you know, line up with the design deliverables for the project, but typically with MBTA projects, 15% would be the first design deliverable, and then it would go to 30, 60, 90, 100. Um, so those would be the, the major design deliverables after 15. Yeah, that's helpful. And then on the concepts for a Milton station, as they're developed now, how many access points? So there's an elevator in the rendering. There's a sloped access point being talked about walkway. And then there's the parking lot is so that's at three. So it's an elevator and two walking, rolling accessible points. So, or am I missing something? No, that's correct. Okay. And then are elevators being talked about at any of the other um, other stations concepts? I believe that is the only one on the on the um, line. Correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody from the design team. That's right. Elevator in the inline stations. It is Milton, and then obviously Mattapan wouldn't need one. And Ashmont, we have to determine which way we're going with the concept there and that may it, it require an additional elevator as well but the inline stations that we're primarily talking about today it's only Milton and the Ashmont issue is the raising and or the possible lowering of the the loop yeah exactly so if we go with an elevated option we may we have to finalize the, the concept we may need to incorporate an elevator and if we go with the at grade option we may not have to, but it still may happen. So it's still a, it's still up in the air with okay, the evaluations thanks. that we're doing. Yep. Yeah, th that's all the questions I have at this time. And looking forward to um, hearing from the the public and and getting some feedback. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Driscoll. Um, I believe I was muted when I was responding to Representative Holmes earlier. Uh, he asked to address the questions in the chat. Um, so I don't see Representative Fluker Oakley uh, with us, but I'm happy to turn it back to Patrick um, and we can begin addressing some of those questions. Patrick, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Adam. I'll just go over some brief Zoom controls, uh, which can certainly take uh, many of the good chat questions we have right off the bat. But uh, if you'd like to make a comment, you must virtually raise your hand. Uh, to do this on the computer, you click the raise hand button under the reactions tab at the bottom center of your screen. If you're on a mobile device, you can also tap the raise hand button in the center of your screen, or if you're on the phone, you dial star nine. Once you raise your hand, you'll be added to a queue with the others who have their hand, hands raised. And I'll call on first folks on just a first come, first serve basis. When it's your turn to speak, I'll say your name and let you know that I'm unmuting you. And then if you're on a computer or mobile device, a box will pop up in the center of your screen, and you'll just need to confirm that you'd like to be unmuted before speaking. If you're on the phone, an automated message will let you know that you're unmuted and you may speak as soon as the recording finishes. Once you're unmuted, everyone in the meeting will be able to hear you. 
And before making your comment, please just state your name and any organizational affiliation. Please also be mindful of time so we can ensure everyone gets a chance to speak and ask questions. And you can also post questions in the chat as many of you have been doing, and we'll document them as part of the meeting record. You can also send us comments via email to trolley at mbta.com. So I do see a lot of good questions in the chat. Uh, I'll start with the first one uh, that I noticed, which is, will the trains have priority signaling versus traffic? So AJ, if you'd like to speak to that one. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Patrick. Um, that's a fantastic question. Um, so the MBTA rec recommends stop signs for vehicular traffic be installed at both Central and Capen at the grade crossings. Um, in addition to the existing stop signs for the crossings for uh, the at the crossings for the trolleys, um, MBTA also intends to install a raised crossing for the trolleys and then a Ponza Trail for added traffic calming and safety. Um, based on a traffic operations analysis and safety considerations, a signal system was not recommended. Um, a railway gate was also not determined to be appropriate at this time. So what we're looking at is is a four way stop at Central Ave. Thank you, AJ, for that information, and thank you for the question. The next question that I see in the chat is, will there be new trains for this? Uh, yes, the Type 9 light rail vehicles um, will be installed on the Mattapan line. They, they are currently on the green line, uh, but they will be existing. They will replace the existing uh, PCC trolleys that are on the Mattapan line currently. Thank you, and thank you for the question. The next question that I see in the chat is, will Valley Road have the same configuration? Um, yes, the future configuration for Valley Road will be a Center Island platform, uh, similar to the one that was that was shown in the, in the video. Um, and I, I think I saw the next question in the chat, which was why the huge $20 million cost uh, for Valley Road and will it be accessible? So I think we can just, yeah, I can elaborate with that one as well. Um, so the estimated construction cost for Valley Road um, includes provisions to make the station fully accessible using walkways and ramps. Um, so due to the difference in elevation from the street, which is the only access point to the station, we need significant ramp structures and retaining walls. Um, which is going to drive up the, the station costs in comparison to say, you know, uh, a, a Cape and Street, which is, you know, already at street level. So that's why there is such an added cost for Valley Road. Um, however, it will be accessible. So the cost to make that station um, fully accessible are included in that cost estimate. Great. Uh, Patrick, why don't we take um, some, some hand raises? Yeah. Let's go first to Lewis. Lewis, I will ask you to unmute right now. Right are. now. Oh, hello. Can you guys hear me? We can. Yes. We can. Yes. Um. So, um, my question is, is um, like, why are like the elevators like necessary? So the elevator, so the elevator is, is necessary. necessary. Oh, I'm getting a lot of feedback. There we go. Um. The elevators are necessary at Milton, at Milton Station. Station. Oh, it's really hard to, uh, <laughs> to make the station accessible, um, right? So the access point from Adams Street is elevated above the station platform, um, making an elevator recommended in that location to bring it to, to full accessibility. So any station needs two accessible paths to be um, ADA compliant. And so that's why we're looking at an elevator at Milton Station. Um, we're also working very um, hand in hand with our system-wide accessibility and station station access groups um, to ensure that you know they're on board with with whatever we're doing as part of this project. Um, so these recommendations are are directly from system-wide accessibility. Great, thank you, AJ, and thank you, Lewis, for the question. The next question is from the chat. So this is from uh, Fatima. Her question is, what is the benefit of, rem rem uh, excuse me, of removing the loop in the yard? I believe she's talking about Mattapan Station, the Mattapan yard. Yeah, that's another great question. So with the type nines being a bi-directional vehicle, meaning they don't need to turn around, the loop is no longer necessary. Um, so essentially, 
by keeping that loop, we would, you know, take up more space in a yard that is already very, very pressed for real estate. Um, so removing that structure, removing that loop gives us a little bit more space um, for a busway and for a maintenance facility and, and things of that nature. Um, the loop also doesn't have the right turn radius for the, the type nine vehicles as well. Great, thank you, AJ. I'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit. Um, I know we had some questions uh, about the type nine vehicle, but Rep Holmes was asking, uh, will the type nine be new trains or will they be uh, refurbished? Yeah, so they'll, they'll be coming from the green line. Um, so the exact improvements that will be needed to those vehicles are, are unknown at this time, but they are the, currently the newest vehicle that we have on the green line. So they are in very good condition in comparison to some, some of the older vehicles. Um, I'm sure if there is, you know, cleaning and, and minor upgrades required to the type nines that we're bringing over, we'll absolutely be doing those and they will look, you know, good as new um, when they make their way over to Mattapan. Thank you, and thank you for the question. I see many people with raised hands, so I'll call on right now, Dan. I'm going to unmute you so you can make a comment or a question. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation, and I wanna thank our elected officials uh, for their engagement as well. Uh, my name is Dan Magoon. I live, I'm in a butter uh, on, the, on the line between Ashmont and the Cedar Grove stop. My question's uh, really pertaining to the Type 9 vehicle and its weight. Uh, the difference, obviously, in the specs and the model of the train, obviously, it's newer, but has a different weight class. Um, what mitigation and what studies have been done on the vibration and noise and things that'll change with the new cars? Great question, Dan. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to pass this one to Phil Santos from the design team. Thanks, AJ. The, the new vehicles do way more right which is part of the reason that we have to evaluate all the structures we have to make some upgrades to some of the bridges some of the undergrade bridges to make sure that it can support the the weight of the vehicle but it is it's a newer suspension system the the pccs are from the 50s right and that propulsion system and the suspension system on that is all custom fabricated in the average shop nowadays in order to replace anything any of the components that need to be replaced the Type 9 vehicle is a new state-of-the-art vehicle that, that is quieter, that is smoother. It is, a, it is a smoother ride in general. So we don't anticipate it being noisier at all, even with the heavier weight of the, of the vehicle. And if we find that, we'll, we'll do additional studies to verify, but we don't, we don't anticipate it adding noise to the corridor and making anything different for the existing neighbors. Great. Thank you, Phil. And thank you, Dan, for the question. Next, I'll go to a question in the chat. Uh, the question is, will the redesign of Mattapan Station address the dangerous blind spot for pedestrians who have to cross the busway while walking towards Blue Hill? Um, the, the short answer is yes. So we are completely reconfiguring the way that Mattapan Yard is set up. So extensive improvements will be made to Mattapan Station and Yard to create a safer and more efficient transit operation. Um, as I mentioned during the presentation, design development um, is still awaiting the findings of a traffic analysis um, and will consider pedestrian access and safety. Um, I would certainly invite um, an additional comment in the chat or feel free to raise your hand um, to tell us a little bit more about about the blind spot. I want to make sure that we're understanding exactly where this this is located and what the concern is. Thank you, AJ. Thank you for the question. Another question that's actually a popular one that we've heard a couple times is Will the Type 9 trains be repainted slash recolored red before they're used on the Mattapan line? It would be confusing to some if they were still green. That is most certainly a very popular question. Um, the future vehicle color has not been decided at this point, but we certainly understand that it's important to capture the essence of, you know, the historic 
um, Mattapan trolley line and, and its future and, and the way it looks. So it, it's an important characteristic um, and we'll definitely consider public input carefully as we get to that portion of, of the program. Great, thank you, AJ, and thank you for the question. I next see Jim with a raised hand. So Jim, we'll ask you to unmute yourself so you can offer a question. Hi, um, I'm Jim Davis, planning board member, uh, town of Milton. I was just wondering uh, if there was any consideration given to running electric buses on this line as opposed to the type nine trolleys on tracks. And if so, and even if not, what would the advantages be to actually running an electric bus as opposed to the type nines? Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, that's a great question. This was evaluated as part of the early assessment phase um, for this program, which was completed several years ago. I think it was 2018 or 2019. Um, I, I think I will pass this one to Joe Pavo to answer that question. Thanks, AJ. So yes, this was brought up back in 2018. Um, I think the reason is uh, there was not enough width in the right-of-way to be able to manage buses in both directions and provide the standard uh, size lanes that we need in the offsets. Um, and, and I believe the public wanted something uh, more similar to what we have today. Not sure if that answers your question. Thank you, Joe, and thank you for the question. I also see Robert with a raised hand uh, in the queue. So Robert, we'll ask you to unmute yourself so you maybe make him speak and offer a question. Good evening, Robert Rosofsky, live in Milton. I've been a user of the trolley, basically at the Valley Road. You answered the question I put in the chat about the $20 million, but then you also raised it was gonna be center platform. So I was curious whether that design would require people to walk across the track in order to get the, to the center platform or does design include ramps and stairs such that you, the pedestrian pathway would put you right into the center of the platform itself without having to cross a track? Thank you for that question. I'm gonna give that one to Phil Santos. Hi, thank you for the question. The The design would not would not land you on the island platform in the middle. It would, it's basically a switch, a set of switchbacks for the ramp and it would land you to a landing area adjacent to the tracks. You would then walk across the tracks and get to the, and, and get to the platform area, which would be 14 inches above top of rail for fully accessible boarding. So there is a little bit of a, I think if you saw in the video, there's, there are slopes on both yep. ends of the island platform that you would just need to take to get to the elevated section of the platform. Okay, thank you. And I just wanna put in a plug uh, related to a previous, uh, just the previous issue. Don't paint the trolleys green. Someone once said to me, well, the trolleys are technically part of the green line, which was totally confusing. And I think you need to reduce any kind of confusion for riders. Thank you for your time. Thanks for the feedback. Thank you. And we appreciate the question. The next question that I see in the chat is, would it be wiser to build out new vehicles that fit onto the existing tracks? My suggestion is large EVs manufactured in the US that would fit the existing tracks, smaller trolley cars and retire the existing trolleys. Uh, Phil, you want to take that one? Sure. So just to, to frame it appropriately here, no matter what we do in terms of a light rail infrastructure program for the Mattapan line, we need to upgrade the traction power system, the overhead catenary system, the communications and signal systems to bring it up to a modern LRV capable system. We're not ripping out the tracks to, and we don't have to change the tracks because of the new light rail vehicle they all fit on the same the same corridor we are going to improve the track infrastructure replace it make state a good repair improvements to make the ride smoother to get rid of any deficiencies in the track structure so any of the work that we're doing here really is required of, prior to any transition of a light rail vehicle and i think 
large EVs and, and things of that sort were evaluated in the previous iteration of the planning process. And we've decided to, to move forward with the, with the type nines, which work well with the infrastructure that we have because the OCS holes, a lot of them are already there. We can reuse some of that infrastructure. The Everybody's used to the overhead catenary existing in the system. It's an efficient way of operating. We do need to make power improvements and add a substation to the Mattapan side of things to make sure that we can feed the line from both both sides and provide the power that the new heavier, faster, smoother light rail vehicle will be. But those those improvements are all part of the program and what we're building out. Great. Thank you, Phil, and thank you for the question. The next questions uh, that I see, I'll deal with uh, Milton Station. So, kind of a Two part question here is an elevator will break down and would it be open for safety? And then similarly, where will the sloped walkway be located? I can take that one. Um, so an elevator will provide an accessible entrance to the station platform. Um, our engineering and maintenance departments will be responsible for maintaining that elevator to ensure that it is operating, you know, efficiently and is, is not breaking down and addressing any problems that, that come about with it. Um, the planned walkway will provide a redundant accessible pathway in the event of an elevator issue. So in the event that the elevator is down or closed for maintenance, um, there will be a, an alternative accessible path um, in the planned walkway. Um, and the next question is where, where will the slope walkway slope walkway be located. Uh, we're still working on defining the exact location um, of the walkway, but it will connect Adam Street to the outbound platform. Great. Thank you, AJ. And thank you for the questions. I'll next go to folks with their hands raised. I see Lee has his hand up. So I'll ask you to unmute so that you can ask a question or offer a comment. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Lee Toma. I'm with the Neponset River Greenway Council, and I'd like to thank you all for uh, putting this project together. Um, I'm eager to see the improvements move forward soon. So uh, my questions are, will the project include repair or replacement of the crumbling retaining walls, and what effect will this have on the Neponset Trail, and will there be funding to create new murals to discourage graffiti? And at the Central Ave station, uh, the, I think someone mentioned that there'd be a new uh, raised crossing for the trail. So it sounds like it will solve the problem of the missing curb cut there. Uh, can that be expedited to address this safety issue? Thank you very much. Appreciate all your good work on this. Thank you very much. Um, I think I can take the first part of it and say that yes, all of the retaining walls and structures on the line, even the ones that are connected to the Neponda Trail and some of the neighboring areas um, will be replaced as necessary as part of this program. Um, in terms of any, um, you know, graffiti prevention or working with the town um, on a mural, that is certainly something that we would be open to and, and plan to work on some of the local municipalities um, on getting that done. Um, we don't have any specific plans at this point in the program, but it's certainly something that, that we've heard and, and will be on our radar as we move forward. Great. Thank you, AJ, and thank you for the question. I'll go back to the chat. The next question is, how will Valley Road Stop be made ADA compliant, and how can you complete that without taking over others' property? So you want me to take that, AJ? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so let, like I said at the beginning of this meeting, we're still in the early stages. Um, these are very preliminary costs at $20 million, and I see that's why there's a lot of questions about how we make that ADA accessible. As Phil mentioned, there is extensive work that needs to be done with ramps, walls, there may be right of way takings. We're still evaluating all the options. Um, there is no guarantee that we can make it accessible at that location without having significant impacts. So it is still something that we are looking at and we will have some options and we'll provide those options when they're available. Thank you, Joe, and thank you for the question. 
The next question that I see in the chat is, will the speed, noise, and trolley size uh, remain the same? AJ, I think you spoke to, to this before, but I'm not sure if you want to offer additional details on the Type 9 vehicles. Yeah, so the, the trolley vehicles will no longer be, the PCC trolleys will no longer be um, the vehicle on the Mattapan line. So we'll be transitioning to the Type 9 light rail vehicles, which are, are larger. Um, Phil, is there anything you want to add? I would say that we are looking to improve speed where we can in between stations where we can do it safely. There are obviously two grade crossings on the line, one at Cape and Street, one at Central Ave, that they will still have slow speeds through it. But we are modeling the, the improved speeds with the new vehicles and trying to improve the trip time between Mattapan and Ashmont for, for the riders so, so that we can have uh, a faster transition there uh, between than what we do today. So that's all part of the evaluation. But like we said before, the we don't anticipate additional noise coming from the vehicle. We actually hope that there's less noise, especially through the loops where there's there won't be any more squeals on the Ashmont loop coming through. And similar, the, the Mattapan loop is also a 50 foot radius loop. So that's very tight as well. I'm sure that 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 can squeal as it goes through that that loop as well. Great. Thank you, Phil. And thank you for the question. I next see a raised hand from Gina. So Gina, we'll ask you to unmute yourself so that you can make a question or offer comments. Hi, my name is Gina Pitts. Um, my question is <clears throat> actually about, so you, you said we're getting cars that were once downtown Boston. Is that the correct? vehicles, the vehicles are currently operating on the green line. So they're getting new cars and we're getting their hand-me-downs? The Type 9s are, you know, a newer vehicle. They're, they're fully accessible and one of the most reliable vehicles in our fleet. Um, I, I wouldn't classify them as hand-me-downs. Um, the, the, the Mattapan fleet will only be eight vehicles as well. So it, it's tough to procure brand new vehicles when you're only purchasing eight of them. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so, so they're not, you, you see so they're not hand-me-downs? Can I, can I also add that the Type 10s, which would be the new vehicles that would be brought into the green line, won't, aren't appropriate for Mattapan. They are, they are significantly larger. The space that we have for station platforms, <laughs> especially with the curvature at some of these locations and, and the tight space constraints, the, the Type 10s are significantly longer and are not a necessary are not required here and and don't really fit the the mold of what we're trying to achieve at at Mattapan. It's it's not it you wouldn't if you saw the size of the, the vehicle, it's just not appropriate for the line. The type the type nine is already an increase in in size. <clears throat> and I think it it is it's gonna do great on the Mattapan line. Okay, thank you. And on and on the elevator and the ramp, um though you said they'll be maintained. Because I know sometimes you get on the elevators downtown and they do smell. Yeah, yes, absolutely. They will be maintained um, to ensure that they remain in, in good working condition and we keep our, our operating times, times up. Um, I, I certainly understand um, the concern, but it's it's something that, that our maintenance teams will work on. So if the elevator goes down, is it does it send a signal that it's not working? How would that be managed? Um, I, I cannot speak to exactly how the elevator is maintained, um, but there is a maintenance crew that will be assigned to ensure that this elevator is, you know, maintained and in good working condition. Thank you, Gina. Thank you for the questions. And thank you, AJ. Um, just to keep on the um, type nine topic, I'll jump a little bit ahead. I see that Rep Driscoll just asked, what is the passenger capacity comparison between the existing PCC cars and the Type 9 cars? How many max passengers in each? And also, does the MBTA envision linking two or more Type 9s together at one time while on passenger service on the Mattapan high-speed line after the transformation project? 
It's a great question. Um, the Type 9 will double the capacity roughly of the existing trolleys. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, Phil. Do you have them off the top of your head? Yeah, yeah. The, the current PCC vehicles have seats for 40 passengers and can, can take about 130 maximum. The, the Type 9s have seating capacity for 44, but can total passenger increases from 125 to 212, which is a 63% increase. So they are they provide more capacity than the significantly more capacity than the existing PCC vehicles do. And we've evaluated, we're looking at ridership and looking at the, the needs of the line to size the platforms appropriately, not only for today, but for the future. We we, we understand the importance of getting it right the first time. So we're looking at it and we're making sure that we do get it right the first time. And we, we think that the type nines with its capacity and, and its performance during peak hours will, will be adequate for Mattapan now and in the future. And I will just add, I know there's a couple questions in the chat about the type nines as well. So the next one I see is, will the type nine have access for people with strollers or wheelchairs? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, uh, the Type 9 is a primarily low floor vehicle, um, so we're planning on raising the platforms at each station by 14 inches, so we'll be level boarding. Um, so this is one of the main reasons that we, we selected the Type 9 over um, you know, some of the other options is that it is, it is an accessible vehicle. Great. Thank you, AJ, and thank you for the question. I next see a comment in the chat uh, that says, hello, I live in Milton and use the Mattapan station. Prior to COVID, I was an avid Monday through Friday commuter for 39 years. Now I use it one or two days a week. I live too far to walk and prefer to park at Mattapan. The new parking lot is unacceptable. The few parking spots that are there uh, are full from the condo residents in the morning. There is broken glass. Milton is assessed for MBTA service, but there must be more parking. Who can I contact about parking lot issues? Can you please inform the Milton public officials that Milton residents use other stations than Milton, other than Milton stations? Thank you for that question. Um, the parking spaces that are at the Mattapan Loop development, I believe there's 50 spaces, are for MBTA commuter, commuters um, with separate parking provisions for the condo residents. Um, so I, we will take this concern back to the uh, associated teams within within the MBTA um, to see if there's if there's an issue here. Great. Thank you, AJ. Thank you for the comment. I next see Jovan. I apologize if I've mispronounced your name, but I see you in the chat with a raised hand. We'll ask you to unmute yourself so that you can make a question. Thank you. Um, I've been um, attending this these meetings for regarding this new train for, I say at least six, seven years, if not more, and definitely longer. But you know, serious meetings like this. We started meeting before George Floyd, before a lot of people understood what equity, inclusion, fairness was, and today. 2023, after George Floyd, after the country's changing, all the Florida and some other places are going backwards. It's sad to sit here and listen to you guys continue to justify giving Matt a pen of a predominantly Black community. Yes, Milton's being affected by it. I'm surprised Milton, with the tax power they have, they allow this to go through. Matt a pen, Black folks, we're used to y'all just stepping on us you know, stepping on our neck, doing it with your please, whether we say it over and over at all the meetings, we said we didn't want to use trolleys. We didn't want hand-me-downs trolleys. I asked him the question, how old would trains be? You didn't want to bring that up. We had, we've been using refurbished trolleys for decades. We did it because we had no choice and also because of the aesthetic of it is historical. Now we're going to spend millions of dollars. If we're going to spend the money, let's bring in new trains to so tell us that it's only going to be about six to eight trains. And therefore, we can't spend the money on new trains. You have to give us refurbished train. 
on the Somerville line that wasn't even existent a, a couple of decades ago. It wasn't even existent. You want to give us their old trains. This is the kind of stuff that it's unacceptable. Going to one or two organizations in the community, like Greater Map and Neighborhood Council and, and a few other I saw on the list, and you telling them the same thing, this is what you're going to do, that's not community involvement. Because you know what? I've attended these meetings, and I know both everybody, not just a Black thing, everybody who were there. Uh, because uh, they said they didn't want these old trains. They didn't want them. You giving us old trains, you know what's going to happen? The same thing that's happening on the E line with these old trains. They're going to have, they're going to be breaking down, and then we're going to continue to use those shuttle buses going through Milton. And Milton doesn't like that. And we don't like it, it changes our vote. Okay, we use it. We use it. You guys, y'all don't get it. It's just sad. Y'all don't get it. You guys don't get it. Y'all go around the questions. Y'all don't get it. We don't want the trains. Y'all telling us what we want, what you're going to give us. You know we don't want those trains. We want new trains. We want you to spend the money. We're worth it too. We have the value. We have the value. Give us our value. Stop, stop telling us what you're going to do for us when you're not doing anything for us. We, we pay taxes. This is Y'all don't understand. People are running from Massachusetts, running to Massachusetts, to other places where they, where they receive respect. Let's change Massachusetts. Let's change what we're doing there. This is not right. This is not right. You're going to shove this train down our throat. Just like you're shoving all this other stuff down our throat. You change the blue lab. You change the Cummings Highway. People are tired of it. And first of all, there's a good chance five to 10 years from now, we'll still be talking. We've been talking so long about this. You can't even answer a senator's question. That's a shame. This is horrible. Having meetings to have meetings with no action is disrespectful to the community. We attend these meetings, but we don't have the time. We do not have the time. I'm a 26 year practicing attorney. I have motions to, to, um, to, um, to complete. I have work to do. But if I don't come to these meetings, you guys are gonna continue to just, we got new people here. You keep saying new type nine. Do you know what new means? New means new. We're not getting new type nines. And lastly, can you just tell us how old will these trains be by the time they come here? Answer that question, please. How old will these trains be? Please. These, these trains are currently still being rolled out on the green line. So they are a newer vehicle. They're, they're certainly not something that have been in operation for years and years and years that are, are damaged and, and unreliable. So I, I do want to say that these are, these are a great vehicle and they are going to be a huge improvement for the Mattapan line. Hey, Jay, if I may, I, I think uh, what's what's a little lost here is what is a type nine, what's a type 10, and what's a type eight, what's type seven. I think uh, uh, we'd be remiss not to show an image. So if we can, uh, if I can just, I don't know if we have the opportunity to show an image. Um, the type nines are the green line vehicles that are not even out in service yet. Um, so they're these uh, green line trolleys are still in being in production. These are going to be the the newest uh, um, green line. So the, if you if you if you've taken the service downtown uh, or anywhere else on the green line, um, these are our newest vehicles. There's only one in service or two in service at a time because um, they're still in production. So uh, I, I, these aren't the the model that you the older trolleys that you're seeing or the ones uh, after that, these are the ones that are still being constructed at the moment. Do we have I, a photo? I, I, think, I don't know I think, if we have a photo in this presentation that we can pull up really quickly. Yeah. All right. I We'll now go to some more questions that I see in the chat. Um, another question on the type nine is if the type 10 is not appropriate for the Mattapan line, what would be used when the type nine becomes obsolete? 
Um, okay, I'm going to pass that one to Joe Pavo. I'm sorry. Can you can you repeat that question? Yes. The question was, if the type 10 is not appropriate for the Mattapan line, then what would be used when the type 9 becomes obsolete? So the type 9s were all delivered, from what I understand, uh, in 2020. They're all delivered. So they're only coming up on three years of age. So they are fairly new vehicles. Um, they are larger than the trolleys. So they will be in service for quite a while on this. We don't have anything envisioned beyond the type nines at this time. Great. Thank you for the question. Thank you, as, Joe. As, as vehicles, I'll just add, to, as vehicles enter end of life, we go through mid midlife overhauls on them. These have not received that yet. So they've got quite a, quite a bit of life left. When we get to the point where the vehicles are at the end of the useful life, then that is when we start looking at replacements. Thank you. The next question that I see in the chat is, will there be a significant interruption in service on this line? I can take that one. Um, so as the design continues, um, we're evaluating constructability. So we are looking at different ways to build this project in a way that minimizes service disruptions. Um, so that is one of the top goals for the team um, as, we, as we put this program together is to figure out how we can build it in a way that is the least impactful to current service. That being said, it is very likely that, we'll, that there will be some impacts to service as we build this. We're replacing, you know, essentially all of the infrastructure on the entire line. So there's very likely to be some interruptions to service, but it is certainly a priority on our end to minimize that. Thank you, AJ, and thank you for the question. The next question that I see in the chat is, can there be a graffiti hall like in Cambridge? Um, so this is this is the first we've we've heard of this request. Um, so we can certainly take it into consideration. Um, we are discussing with DCR regarding the preservation of existing murals on retaining walls along the corridor, um, and we'll continue to consider opportunities for additional artistic elements. Um, so I appreciate that that idea and that feedback. Yes, thank you very much, and thank you for the great suggestion. We also have a question of what is planned for bicycle parking at the stations? Um, I'm gonna pass that one to Phil. Sure, thanks AJ. The goal is to provide bicycle parking wherever there is sufficient space. Now, some stations have more space than others to work with, but we're working to provide as much parking for cyclists as possible. We know that the line runs adjacent to the Naposa Trail. We know that's very important and we hope that people utilize the Neponson Trail to get to the to get to these stations and get on the trolleys or the, the new trains to make their way to wherever they're going. So yes, we will be including parking for bicycles. Great, thank you, Phil, and thank you for the question. We next have a comment. Um, Comment is, I hope that one of the old trolleys can be saved and kept as a museum piece on display, much like the old train car on the Minuteman Trail in Bedford. Um, AJ, I'm not sure if you want to offer some response yeah. to that. Yeah, I, I can take that one. Um, so the team is going to continue to engage with the local community and key stakeholders um, to identify potential uses for the legacy PCC, ca PCC cars. Um, once they're retired from the line. So at this point, no decisions have been made as to how or where the PCC trolleys will end up. Um, but we certainly understand that um, this is something the community really cares about. Um, and we understand the historic value of, of these cars and, and plan to honor them and, and however they're retired. Thank you for the question and thank you for the information. I next see a question from Representative Holmes, who's asking, 
how many Type 9 vehicles will be in service within the MBTA system? Um, we're anticipating a fleet of eight vehicles to provide service for the Mattapan line. So that is the same number of trolleys that are currently on the line. So rather than eight, eight PCC cars, you'll have eight Type 9 light rail vehicles. Um, which obviously have a, a greater capacity than, than the existing trolleys. Um, I'm not sure if this means the entire MBTA system, though. I, I don't have the answer to that question. I don't know if Joe or anyone else on the call has the answer, but it's certainly something that I can I can dig into um, and get back to you on. So, AJ, the one thing, the one thing I do want to add about the Type 9. So the Type 9s, we received the last car. It was in 2020. We still have vehicles under warranty. So these are fairly brand new vehicles that we have on the system. They're designed for 30 years with a 15 year midlife overhaul. So at 15 years, around 2035, they would go through a complete refurbishment where they would again be essentially brand new vehicles again and would be in service for another 15 years beyond that. So these are extremely reliable vehicles, more reliable than the Mat Mattapan trolleys. Uh, they can handle the snow, they're heavier, they're larger. Um, and they'll be extremely reliable in the winter compared to what we have today. So these are not hand-me-down trains that are, you know, 10, 15 years old. These are essentially brand new trains that we have on the system right now that is still in warranty. So that is, is, is what we have. They should be good for about 30 years with one midlife overhaul. And that would be in 2035. And right now we're planning for eight. But if we had to, we could add one more train or two more trains if we needed to, to maintain service. So Rep Holmes did clarify, he was asking, yes, I am asking for the total number of type nine. That is why we thought it would be better to go with the type nine instead of ordering. We have, cars. Sorry, we have 24 total on the system. We are still running some of the older Type 8 uh, trains as well. So we have 24 total Type 9 vehicles on the green line right now. Great. Thank you, Joe. And thank you for the question. Yep. I next see Robert with a raised hand. So Robert will ask you to unmute yourself, and then you can ask a question or offer a comment. Uh, yeah, good evening again. Uh, a reference was made to the winter. I started taking the trolley in 1991, and even with some pretty severe storms, the team managed to clear the trolley lines, tracks, and the trains ran. And, and even the Boston Globe occasionally had a, big, had a picture of the big snowplow that drove along the lines. Then that dropped, and you know there'd barely be an inch of snow, and the trolley line would shut down, and the very inefficient shuttle buses were put in place. So that's the speech. Here comes the question. What are you going to do to get back to the kind of service we had in the early 90s in the middle of winter, including heavy snowfall? Because even when we had heavy snowfalls, the trolley went down, replaced with shuttle buses, but other parts of the Green Line were running elsewhere within the metropolitan area. Now, thanks to global warming, we may not have as severe snowstorms uh, in the future, but we should still anticipate some. So I'd like you know an answer to that question. Thank you. Yeah, so with the type nines, they will certainly be able to handle um, that type of the, the harsh winter weather. So that won't be an issue with the type nines. Um, the trolley cars have gotten older over the years and they break down quite often with the snow. And that's the reason we pull them off. They just can't handle the snow anymore. Uh, but the type nines are heavier vehicles and they'll be able, they'll be capable of handling that. So we will have much better service in the winter. Well, that's helpful, but will there be any clearing of snow that's needed for the trolleys to run like there had been at least in the 90s, if not earlier before I started taking the trolley? Uh, I would say yes, we will do everything that's necessary to keep them running. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe we just answered this, but there's a question in the chat that just says, winter time, will the walkways be cleared? Yes, the walkways will be cleared. Um, the MBTA operations will include snow removal um, on the new Milton station sloped walkway and at, and at other stations as well, station platforms. Great, thank you. Thank you for the questions. 
The next question that I see in the chat is, are we anticipating any change in price for riders? Um, at this time, there are no plans for fare changes specific to the Mattapan line or this transformation program. Um, I will say that fares are periodically reviewed um, for the system as a whole uh, by a specific department within the MBTA. Great. Thank you. I also see that Mark has a uh, raised hand. So Mark, we'll ask you to unmute yourself and you can ask a question or make a comment. Okay, hi gentlemen, can you hear me? We can. We can. Okay, my name's Mark Christo, I live in Milton. And you did answer one of the questions and you explained that there will be eight vehicles of the type nine type, same as what we have for the PCC cars. The seating capacity difference is negligible, I believe. I heard 44 seats on type nine, 40 on the PCC. The type nines are a longer vehicle, which allows more people to stand. It sounds like, and that's one of the differences, I guess. My guess is though at grade crossings, those longer vehicles are gonna slow traffic more as well. And I just want a confirmation on that. And I'd also like a confirmation on this refurbishment project. It's gonna cost $66 million because back in 2019, I believe it was, I went to the BPL Lower, Mill, Lower Mills branch to listen to the proposal. At that point, they had also mentioned about you know, replacing the uh, trolley line with buses. Um, I just want to make sure that I understand that this is not an incorporation of the trolley line into the rapid transit system. If that were to occur, my guess is those, those grade crossings at certainly at Central and, and Cape, it would be drastically impacted. You'd need to elevate the, uh, the trains that would then have to cross at that location and probably eliminate stations as well because you need more space between to the current stops in terms of the configuration. So we probably lose three of our four stops in the town of Milton. Could you just uh, give some uh, feedback on those two points, please? Yeah, absolutely. So you are correct in that the this program, the Mattapan line will still be an extension of the red line. So you will still have to get off of the red line heavy rail trains and transfer over to the light rail trains that are on the Mattapan line. So that is correct. That is a very uh, a question that is, has come up very frequently is will this project extend the red line? Um, and the answer to that is no. Um, if you could, if you could repeat the first part of the question, I kind of started to think about the second part. <laughs> the first part slipped my mind. Oh, did we? Uh, can we? Can we unmute him again? Yep, I've just asked him to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I was just asking about the grade crossings and specifically Central because that's a major route in and out of town. So with longer vehicles that may, with the stop sign, impact traffic flow there on the roadway. And if in fact you're confirming that this is not an extension of rapid transit, the MBTA community program that categorizes Milton as a rapid transit uh, town is erroneous. So the, the I, I wouldn't say that this is not classified as, as rapid transit, it is light rail, but that still classifies um, as as rapid transit, I'm certainly not an expert on the MBTA mm -hmm. Communities Act, so I don't want to speak out of um, you know out of turn. But I yeah. will say that it's still it is still rapid transit. Um, as for Central Ave Crossing and Cape and Street Crossing as well, we are planning on installing stop signs at for both the vehicles and the cars. So that is different than it is today. There is no stop signs for the cars, um, making it an unprotected intersection. So that is certainly a change um, to the traffic pattern in that area, um, but we're doing traffic analyses to make sure um, that the impacts to um, impacts of traffic are, are considered as part of this project. There's certainly a balance between um, you know, an ideal um, traffic flow and configuration and compared, you know, you have to balance that with, with safety. There's a huge safety element, um, mm -hmm. with, with, a, with a crossing and trains interacting with, with vehicles. So it, these are all things we have to consider, um, yes. as part of the program. Absolutely. And, and, and if you could still hear me, I too yeah. certainly am not a transit expert, but in looking at the Mattapan trolley, it only gets you as far as Ashmont. So when I want, or anybody wants to take it into Boston, you have to deal with the wait time for the trolley, the wait time at Ashmont, as well as the dwell time until that train gets sequenced into a uh, position. So if you're looking at the current type nines that are on the Riverside line that are going to be transferred, 
to our line here, it's a drastically different service level. So I would not categorize it rapid transit just based on that one element. So I just want to put that out there for thought as well. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the question. Sure. I also see that Representative Holmes has his hand raised. So I'll ask you right now uh, if you'd like to unmute. Thank you. I just wanted to, uh, while we were talking about just conveniences of crossings and in particular the Mattapan pedestrian, um, the other thing that comes to mind that I've heard quite a bit about is that we spent quite a bit of money to uh, revamp the furniture store at the end of the line with DCR and create, because I saw the question about uh, food on the trolley. I think we should, while we're going through this retrofit for Mattapan, make sure we talk with DCR to see if we can, one, engage them to make sure they understand that there could be more foot traffic if we finally get the furniture store or that little place that we had envisioned at first as a coffee shop and a bike shop. This will be a very good time to begin that conversation again because of the fact that that would add certainly the possibilities for food and as people enter and exit the, the trolley, but it also would engage that that corner in a way that we had envisioned, you know, 10, 12 years ago, we did that with DCR. So be a good time for you guys to help with that conversation. Thanks. Thank you, Representative. I appreciate that. And yeah, we have heard um, through public engagement that that is something um, that people people are interested in and, and people want to see. So we actually have already engaged DCR and are encouraging them to, um, you know, essentially do something with that building that is, you know, all but abandoned at this point. So it is something that we've been working with DCR on um, and I can work to get you an update and see um, kind of where that stands currently. We've had a few preliminary conversations with them. So I don't have, of course, don't have, um, I don't, I don't know what their plans exactly are, but I can certainly give you an update on that. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, representative. The next question that I see in the chat is, will there be additional ridership surveys? And for clarification, where are we at? Uh, where are we with the trolley refurbishment? And the design phase for Mattapan and Ashmont are to be announced? Um, yeah, those are both good questions. For um, the trolley refurbishment in comparison to the design for Mattapan and Ashwan. So those two programs are running concurrently and, and essentially independently of one another. So the MBTA has has gone forward with the refurbishment program to essentially improve service on the Mattapan line while the transformation program, you know, is designed and eventually construction and, and eventually constructed. So they are happening um, in parallel and on two, you know, separate tracks. However, we understand the importance of, um, you know, continuing to talk about both and make sure that the public is engaged on, on both efforts. Um, so they are, they are separate if, if that was the question. Um, for Mattapan and Ashmont, we did talk a little bit about um, some of the, the challenges and some of the considerations that we have for those two stations um, and the design um, for those two stations are, are still ongoing. Uh, the concept designs are, are still ongoing while the inline stations are, are essentially complete. Um, as for ridership surveys, so the, the survey for, for riders is still, uh, it's still active on the website and will remain for, for the foreseeable future. Um, certainly appreciate all of taking the time to participate um, and we'll continue to offer public engagement opportunities as the project progresses. Great. Thank you for the question and thank you, AJ, for the information. I think we have time for one last question here. Uh, so this is just uh, a clarifying question. Um, I think we answered this before, but why can't new trolleys for the Mattapan line be bought at the same time as new trolleys for the green line? Yeah, so I the, can take that. Uh, go, go ahead, AJ. I was oh, going to say, gonna... <laughs> go ahead, AJ. It's you. <laughs> um, I was going to say that we, we have evaluated um, the type tens for Mattapan to determine if they are an appropriate, you know, vehicle selection for this line. Based on the sheer size of the type tens, we would near, need to nearly double 
um, the platforms at each station and the real estate is really limited in some of these areas to actually do so. Um, so it, it's simply not a compatible vehicle um, for this line. It's, it's too large of a vehicle to operate on the Mattapan line, which is only 2.6 miles long. Um, so we, we have we have certainly looked at, I do wanna make that clear that we, we did do an evaluation of the type tens on Mattapan, um, but it simply wasn't wasn't the right fit. It wasn't the right choice. Yeah, AJ, the only thing I'm going to add, just for context, the Type 9s is 74 feet in length. The existing trolleys are 48 feet in length. So these are significantly bigger. They're going to have the 50% bigger. They're going to have a lot more capacity. Um, so there was also another question. I might as well answer that now regarding the Type 9 staying in usage. Uh, we are going to continue to run Type 9s on the green line uh, system along with the type 10s once those are in production and are delivered in the future. So we will have them on both lines. So we will have some redundancy there. We'll have similar cars uh, on both lines. We'll have the same cars on both lines, I should say. Um, so that does provide uh, some redundancy for us in terms of maintenance, parts, uh, and maintaining the service on the Mattapan line. Great. Thank you, Joe. So AJ, I know we have a lot of outstanding questions, but uh, we can certainly respond in writing to those we didn't get to tonight, but I'll pass it back to you for any closing remarks. Um, thank you everybody for attending today. Really appreciate the time and feedback. We certainly understand the, the criticality of um, engaging with the public um, to make sure that we're designing and delivering a project that uh, meets, the, meets the needs of the riders. So, um, I understand that there is is frustration with some about you know timelines and and actually implementing change. So we you know we are moving forward as quickly as we can with this program, uh, but you know we also need to make sure that we are taking everything into consideration so that we deliver a project um, that is is a good one for the community and that doesn't have you know operational conflicts down the line. Um, I certainly see a, a number of, of questions still in the chat, so I do want to address that. I will be sure to respond to each of these. Um, I think we need to figure out exactly how we're going to do that, whether we post it on um, our website or send out an email blast. I think we have the emails for all of the attendees, so I think that is um, a way that we can we can respond to these, but I just want to make sure that everyone's aware that we will be um, responding to any questions that are in the chat. Um, it just will be following this meeting. Um, that being said, I do want to just reiterate that our, um, our email is trolley at mbta.com. If there is any additional feedback, questions, comments, concerns, I encourage you to reach out to that. This whole team has access to that email. Thank you for pulling that up. This whole team has access to that email. Um, so if there are concerns, questions, please do submit them. Um, we, are, we are always open to, to feedback and, and constructive criticism. So I wanna make sure that we're engaging with you all appropriately. Um, and if there's anything that we are, are missing in that process specifically, I wanna hear it. So um, that's all I've gotten. Thank you everybody for the time today.